I'm just checking how many steps I did today. It's a long way. How many of you have a smartwatch or something that you check? Yeah, half of you, I guess. In Western Europe, there's actually 200 million wearable devices. And that is on average one per person. We use that to check our activity, our sleep, our stress level, and much more. The reason why we register this is because we want to improve it. And if we want to improve something, we need to measure it. What gets measured gets done. But before I go further into this, let me just shortly introduce myself. My name is Christina, and I grew up in Denmark in a house with a big garden full of vegetables. We had a greenhouse, we had berry bushes and fruit trees. And what we didn't get from this garden, we got from the supermarket around the corner. Back then, there was no such thing as organic labeling. Food waste was not a thing. In our family, we didn't know anybody who was a vegetarian. And also, the whole term about climate crisis, it was not even invented. And all that actually stayed true as I embarked on my studies to become a food scientist. I had this big dream about developing chocolate that would be great tasting and healthy. <laughs> be it vegetables, be it chocolate, I love food. To me, food is the best. Food is vital. It ensures that a little baby gets the nutrients to grow up and be a strong person. It builds our immune system. And it actually navigates our mood. And whether you're a professional athlete or you are an investment banker, to be at your best, you need food. So food is health, it's energy, it's performance, and it's pleasure. There's never a real party without food being at the center of the table. We travel, we explore, with food, new dishes, new flavors. And then there is cultural identity, family tradition, friendships. We cook to show love. Food is the best. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm also here to tell you something else about food. Food is the worst. Yeah. We built a food system in the industrial age, which was set up to provide safe and durable food with maximum output at minimum costs. Yeah. And this food system that we have today, what we produce, where we produce it, how we produce it, how we transport it, process it, pack it, store it, cook it, eat it, waste it. Our food system today is going to kill us. And it's going to kill the planet. Second after the energy sector, the food sector is the highest contributor to our climate change. Yay. No. Not really. More than 30% of the greenhouse gas emission comes from the food system. And apart from that, we have the biodiversity laws, the laws of plants and animal species. You might know it from pictures of trees cut down in the Amazonas or the orangutan without a home. But we don't need to travel far. Here in Europe, we have lost 20% of our birds since the 80s. Yeah? So, while we today produce more food than ever, we also have hunger on the rise. Three billion people, almost half the planet, three billion people do not have access to safe, nutritious food on a daily basis. And of that, almost one billion people go to bed every night 
hungry. Not hungry like when we are hungry. They are starving. Yeah? So the paradox is that at the same time, 59% of adult Europeans are overweight or obese. Worldwide, 2 billion people. 2 billion people getting too much, 3 billion people not getting enough. And then uh, to make it even more complex, we're throwing away one third of our food, of which the majority is still a perfect condition for being consumed. Okay, 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 it's getting heavy, huh? The outlook, there must be something good coming there. Well, the outlook is that in 25 years, we will be 25% more people, approximately 10 billion people. We don't know how to feed the population today, the humans of the planet Earth, within the planetary boundaries. Much less do we know how to do it in 25 years. But there's hope. Let me give you some good news here. The good news is we know what to do. We need to transform the food system as we know it today. And the second piece of good news is we know how to do it. We need to unleash the technology, the innovation, the science that we have and change the food system through that. We are now in the digital era where people work together and make this possible. So, um, because I had this dream about healthy chocolate, I joined a large global chocolate company after my studies. And I built a career and then nine years ago, when I became a mother, I stepped out of this career path and left the big chocolate company. And I started working with startups. And only then I started to understand sustainability <laughs> and the problems in our food system. But also the opportunities within our food system. Now I'll tell you, for somebody who grew up in the industrial area, and was educated and had a professional career, it was quite a mind shift suddenly to go from focusing on output to put sustainability first. But working with the startups, it helped me, especially the ag tech and food tech startups, and I would like to share with you a few examples of how the future can look. This is a robot invented by a Swiss startup. And what it does is that it helps the farmer to reduce his use of chemicals. With the help of image recognition and AI, the robot identifies and with ultimate precision what each plant needs. Is it fertilizers or is it pesticides? So, Actually, what it can do is that it can reduce the use of chemicals with 95%. This is good for our groundwater, it's good for the bees, it's good for us who eats the products, and it's good for the farmer because his yield gets higher and he's saving some costs here. Yeah? One very interesting thing about this technology is that if we were to rule that out all over the planet Earth, we would be able to reduce the global carbon emission by 0.5%. One technology. The next example is um, actually applied by a supermarket up in Norway. So when you check out with your shopping basket, you not only see what each item costs and the total expense, but you also see what was your carbon footprint of your shopping basket and the different items. What gets measured gets done. And what this supermarket experiences is that their shoppers are buying a lot more vegetables and reducing significantly on their meat shopping basket. A Swiss startup is doing something similar in the restaurant businesses uh, where you can go in and see a gauge of the food that comes out in this restaurant, how that has impacted the world today and how your plate 
impacts the world. Final example is another Swiss startup that has decided to combat food waste. What they do is in the restaurant catering businesses put the bin on a scale and above there is a camera. Through image recognition, together with machine learning, they identify what was wasted thrown out that day. The manager gets a report when he can see what, how much, when and why, and how much it actually costs the business. Their vision is to reduce the food waste of these restaurants by 60%. And my dream is that they will come up with a device that we can place in our homes so that I can look at my watch and understand my food waste and do better. Okay, I'm looking at my clock. Well, I'll finish talking. 12 minutes of your lives, my life has passed since I start talking. And in 12 minutes, the world has emitted another megaton CO2. It will take months, years, maybe decades, for these great technologies to come out and be widely spread enough to truly have an impact on the food system. Before we can talk about a sustainable food system. But in the meantime, there are things that you can do, that I can do today, which will have an impact already tomorrow. The first thing I'll encourage you to do is reflect what is your role professionally in the food system. Will you join a big food company and help them do better? Will you become an entrepreneur? Or will you invest in an entrepreneur trying to solve, or a startup trying to solve these problems? But also at home, make a challenge. Try and reduce your waste. Try and buy more organic, local, and seasonal. Maybe one meat free day a week and get that reusable coffee cup and water bottle to go with you. Small things, but in the total, it makes a difference. It makes a difference what's on your plate. I would like to finish off with this quote. We're the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>